Hi, I'm Eric Hawkins, and this is Jake. He's one of our engineers. And we're here for episode four of the New in Blue show. So today we're gonna to talk about what's going on in the world of Park Tool, show you some new product, give you another history lesson about old tools, or tools we used to make, and the origins of those tools, talk a little bit about uh, some community activity we got going on. But first of all, talk to Jake. Jake, how long have you been at Park Tool? Been at Park Tool for uh, just under two years right now. Um, and you started out as a bike mechanic, Yeah, right? I started out as a bike mechanic. Uh, I've been in the industry, you know, as a bike mechanic and here now for um, about 10 years. Right. Um, so interesting story. He was a bike mechanic, wanted to get into the industry more, so he went back to school to be an engineer. And he's, uh, you've seen a lot of his work uh, amongst our new products. So let's start out with new product. And first of all, Jake, Tell us what's at the top of yeah. the TS2.2P. Yeah, so at the top here we have the TS2 EXT.3. Um, you know, very similar to the TS2 EXT.2. Uh, we did add though a slot right here, and this was uh, designed for e-bikes. So when you're truing a wheel, um, a rear hub drive e-bike, uh, you spin it. Sometimes you get it where that wheel wants to ride out of the the slots here. So what we did, we just drop down this, uh, this slot here and it allows to, it captures the rear hub drive e-bike. Right, so, so why do you need up. the extensions? Uh, the extensions there, you know, that's for, um, you know, you, you can flip around, you can go up to a 200 millimeter wide rear hub. Right. Uh, also, you can, uh, you know, accommodate larger tires and you get 29ers and, and all those. Right, can work so with. for the old style TS2, which was shorter, yes. this is a TS2.2, which is tall enough for a 29er. Yes but this will get you up higher, out wider. It also has built-in through axle holders. Yes. So you, basically you can put a through axle right, right in the stand. Uh, below that um, is our WH2, which is a single position wheel holder. We came out with the WH1 this summer. Three different angles that you can put your wheel on. The WH2 is basically a single position version of that. Comes with the through axle adapter. 12, 15, 20 millimeter, you can also put a regular uh, quick release on there. Uh, basically to do all your tire work, you could do hub work, take a cassette off, lots, it's very versatile, very handy. You can bolt that to a bench or you can use it in a vise and um, store it away when you're not using it. Uh, stepping over here, uh, this is our Cyclone Chain Scrubber. This we've made for years and years, but this is the CM5.3. And the difference is, you see the handle there, this was is designed to basically pedal back on a derailleur style, freewheel, cassette style bike, anything that uh, you can pedal backwards. But now we've added a slot on the back side. Why do we do that, Jake? Uh, we designed that for e-bikes. So you have a mid-drive e-bike you pedal backwards, that chain's not going anywhere. So right. you're not gonna be able to clean the chain with, you know, so you in need the traditional. To, yeah, right, you need to pedal forward. Yes. And otherwise you'd have to hold on the inside of the bike, but now we put a handle slot on the other side so you can pedal forward, clean any chain, including e-bikes. This is also available as part of a kit. This is the Chain Gang, the CG 2.4. Now we're gonna move over here. These are really exciting. We're, we're excited and happy that we've finally got these in stock. But these are T-handles, sliding T-handles, um, but they have some really cool features. So, tell us about these, Jake. Yeah, so the new T-handles here, it comes in a hex set and a torque set. Um, with them you have your, you know, you have your speed spinner there. Uh, we also have the, the sliding T-handle, so you can get a little more leverage there or get deeper you know, into um, you know, s spots on a bike. Uh, it also has our uh, strip gripper, which uh, helps remove, um, if you have a stripped fastener head, you know, say you have a five millimeter head that just stripped out, can't get it with a regular Allen um, wrench there. This one has a twist on it, so you're able to put it in the fastener and then twist it out and it'll right. help Made you for removal only. Yes, removal of, only. Of oversized or stripped fasteners. Yes. It's basically tapered, but with a reverse twist on it. Yep. Put it in there and it'll, it'll pull pretty much anything out. Yeah, yep. So these are both sets. Each one of them comes with their own holder. Basically, that'll go on any bench, any toolbox, uh, work tray, 
pegboard. It just makes it really nice and easy to, to put them in and out and they're handy to grab. You don't have to take them out of a case or a pouch or anything like that. Each one of these sets is a set of eight. Uh, they are also available individually. The hex set is the THH-1 and the torque set is a THT-1. Another new product with that we introduced in September of this year is really an updated product, but it's the PRS33.2, our power lift repair stand. We came out with the PRS33 about six years ago. Fantastic for lifting heavy bikes, e-bikes, cargo bikes, but also it's just a great way to get the bike in a perfect position for any repair. If you want to work on the bottom bracket, you put it at the right level. If you want to work at the headset, you lower it down, everything is right there. But we did make some updates to that. So Jake, tell us what's different about the PRS 33.2 versus the PRS 33. Yeah, so the PRS 33.2, few different features we added. Uh, you know, probably the biggest one would be the uh, USB ports. Uh, so with that, you're able to charge, you know, lights. If you're, you're working on, um, say, Di2, Shimano, or you know some new SRAM access or anything like that, you're able to charge um, batteries and everything there. Um, we also updated the tray. So the buttons there, they're uh, facing the mechanics, and when they're working on the bike, the buttons are right there in front of them. You don't have to reach on the side anymore, and they're larger, so you know right. it's a little easier to uh, to reach up there. And right, those are the, the up and down buttons, so. the power up and power down. Yes, correct. Uh, also added the PRS33 um, TT, so we have a new tool tray that sticks out. It's got a magnet bar and slots, you know, to put screwdrivers and, you know, whatever else you need to work on the bike. Um, and then the final thing we added was a larger hook so you can hang, you know, larger wheels like fat bike wheels on it. Right, or frames um, yeah. or whatever you want to get out of the way. Yes. So that is really a big leap forward in repair stands. Just a whole new way to work on bikes. Right now in our line, we make about 20 different models of repair stands, anything from wall mount, bench mount, folding stands, shop stands. Uh, but it all started with one stand. And now we're gonna go and talk to Art Angstrom. And Art Angstrom was one of the founders of Park Tool. He, along with my father, uh, bought a little bike shop on the east side of St. Paul in the mid 50s, and they started Park Tool in 1963. They didn't really know what they were doing at the time and they didn't really know it would become a tool company, but it all started with a repair stand. So let's go talk to Art. All right, we're here with Art Engstrom. And Art Engstrom, along with my father, Howard Hawkins, bought a little bike shop on the east side of St. Paul in the mid 50s and uh, became uh, one of the more prominent Schwinn dealerships in the country. But uh, Art, welcome, first of all. Thank you. And uh, Art's here to tell us a little bit about the history of how they started. But mainly today we're going to talk about repair stands because uh, as uh, we heard earlier, we've got a, a, a new PRS 33.2 electric lift stand. But Art, tell us in the beginning, back when you guys were young, uh, wide-eyed businessmen to be, what, what, how it all happened? Well, that's an interesting story because it all started because there was a need for a product. We were, we were repairing bicycles more or less on the floor. Upside down mostly. Upside right? down yeah. on the floor, resting on the saddle and the handlebars. Right. Which was the standard way of repairing a sure. bicycle or putting it on the workbench the yeah. same way. And in those days, Howard and I started a concept of what we call Titan Oil and Adjust on a bicycle. Okay. And we had people bringing their bicycles in and we would do all kinds of uh, light maintenance, not heavy duty type right. maintenance, for $7.50. Well, that seems like we, a good deal. We would, we <laughs> would tune your bike up, we'd, uh, we'd do some wheel truing. Yeah. We'd clean the bike, we had a steam cleaner. Sure. And, and uh, we would do this kind of thing. And we started to get so many bicycles in for this kind of work that we were wearing ourselves out just moving bikes around, right. turning them over and back and forth and things of that nature. Right. 
So there was definitely a need for some type of a repair facility right. to handle this kind so of thing. So there were other stands out there in the market, but you guys being uh, industrious and cheap, probably at the time, right? Yeah. You decided to make your own stand. Yeah. And this is that stand, right? So this is a single arm repair stand. And I tell people, back in the day, they were so used to working on things upside down that this didn't have to be very tall because you turn the bike upside down anyway. That's right, that's right. So tell us how you made this stand, the physical part of putting this together. Okay, basically this is made out of junk parts. Junk parts. <laughs> Accumulated parts. Right. Uh, the base is a dining room table a, the leg set, right? Yeah, the leg set, uh, cast iron type mm -hmm. leg set. Uh, I don't recall where it, where it came from. Maybe maybe it came from the Salvation Army thrift store. Right. I have no idea. Other things came from the junkyard. Right, and this the, was an axle. This is an axle from a Model Model T truck, and and it was very difficult to to drill a hole in there because that's hard steel. <laughs> yeah, and right. we didn't have facilities like that, so we had to take it somewhere and sure. have that kind of thing done. How about this big part? That is a, I believe it's brass. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I thought it was a brass printing roller. Sure. And filled with concrete. Filled with concrete. This weighs yeah. about 75 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And then these parts here you fabricated, I assume. Yeah, you know, a lot of this is just kind of strap iron and right. various things. So the clamp, basically it's an over-center clamp and all the tubing was basically the same size. So you use this, you got it up in the air, you saved your backs, and you used this for quite a while, oh, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, for quite a while. So you guys weren't the first with a stand, but you were the first with this stand. And then that turned into this stand here, which is a PRS-1. And basically these are all sand castings here. The clamp, you and Howard and Jim Johnson, who was a friend of yours that helped with a lot of these things, were awarded a patent on this. This over center clamp with the spring in it. Again, really only good for a certain size. Yeah, um, either one inch or inch and an eighth. Or right, I mean, it just didn't get much bigger than that's that. Right. And that's what all the bikes were. Yeah. It has a big cast base on it, not adjustable in height in any way. But this was the first production stand, the, the PRS-1. And this had several different versions of it. It ended up coming with a different base and, and so on. But the clamp remained the same. But tell us kind of the beginning of how did you have the idea for this, you and Howard, and then to take that idea into production? Because you're just two guys in a bike shop, right? That's right. Fortunately, I had a good friend that I went to school with. His name was Jim Johnson. Mm -hmm. He worked for the Boeing Aircraft Company, and he was getting burned out working for them. And he was kind of a, what you'd call a hippie type guy, and he just didn't care to work for a a big company anymore. So he all of a sudden up and quit, moved back to Minnesota, mm -hmm. and started hanging around the bike shop. At the same time that we were kind of thinking about doing something with this. Right. Jim had a little drawing board that he would come in and sure. he'd make little drawings. He'd say, let me, let me show you this idea. Let me see if this would work. And he'd go on home on his lathe and different things that he had, and he would make things and come back and say, do you think this would work? Right. We'd say, we don't know, let's try it out. Right. So, so he had quite a bit to do with this. He had a lot to clamp. do with making the original patterns and drawings for this. Mm -hmm. Then we had to study about what kind of metals would be best. Sure. Fortunately, we had friends in the city of St. Paul, there's so many people that you can go to and pick their brain and get ideas. Mm -hmm. So we went to a guy that w w had a little foundry in an abandoned building in downtown St. Paul. It was colder than all get out in there. So this um, would have been in the early 60s? Yeah, right, yeah. somewhere in that area. And he said, yeah, I'll make some, 
some castings for you. Right. But if you're going to start production, you have to have a match plate. You have right. to. We didn't have any money for that. Right. But we realized that we had to do it. Yeah, if you're going to make uh, a finished looking product, you, that's you, right. you have to make the commitment. That's right. You can't. And these are all sand castings. The, all these three pieces here. And they, and they do that basically by a match plate. They make the, the positive and you wrap sand around it, pull the positive out, and now you've got a cavity. And that's what you pour that's the That's where you pour your aluminum. hot metal in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, these little pivot points, these little screws, we would buy on the open market. We'd take them home. Jim had a lathe and I had a lathe, and we would turn the, nur the knurling off of the socket oh, head sure. cap screws so they fit in, the in our basement at night yeah. and bring them back to the shop and assemble them into a right. finished product. Just so you know, we don't do things like that anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. But all of this was uh, to meet a need. Right, so the interesting uh, part of the Park Tool history was in the beginning, Part, uh, tools were made under the Schwinn label. And so we have stands like this that we find that are red and they have a Schwinn logo. Basically, uh, there's a plate that's riveted on and those were the original stands. And then you started to make them under your own brand. That's right. And the blue that we use now so prominently and that we have a, tra a US trademark on, etc., because we're known as the Blue Tool Company, it really was just chosen as an alternative to red, correct? Yeah, yeah, Right, exactly. so red was Schwinn, so what's yeah. another color? Let's use yeah. blue. Late, later on, when Schwinn wanted us to start manufacturing other tools like cone wrenches, mm -hmm. they actually lent us money to right. buy tooling yeah. to get started. And that's amazing. And but so we owe a lot to the Schwinn Bicycle Company. We do company owe a lot back, to Schwinn Bicycle back Company in the day. and Jay Townley for mm -hmm. helping us get into the Schwinn Company right. with this concept of this repair stand, which developed into all kinds of different other right. products, ideas. All right, well, there you have it. That's a history <laughs> uh, of Park Tools origins in the repair stand business starting with the PRS-1, actually starting with this stand that they used every day in the shop. And now we're gonna have to get a forklift to get it out of here. But uh, this was part of uh, what got us started making what is now over 20 stands in our line. So we'll talk to Art again sometime, but for now, we're gonna send it back. And we're back. Uh, one thing that we do here that we take a lot of pride in and it is growing for us is our video library. And we have hundreds of videos on our YouTube channel. We really encourage you to subscribe. It's product video, it's storytelling, Tech Tuesdays. And one of our biggest segments of our YouTube channel is our repair help. And we've just introduced bottom brackets probably eight or nine different videos on uh, bottom brackets. Every, everything from the old three piece, one piece, press fit, everything. Uh, so get on to the Park Tool YouTube channel, subscribe, and you can figure out just about any repair with the help of Calvin and Truman. Another thing we do this time of year is our community grant program. We give away 10 sets of tools, repair stands, aprons, a BBB4, Big Blue Book of Bicycle Repair, to 10 nonprofits that do bicycle work in their communities. And it's a worldwide thing. Um, you've only got about a week to apply for that. So if you uh, are interested in it, all the information is on our website. Just go to parktool.com, go down to news, and you'll see a story there along with an application. Applications are over January 1st, 2020, and um, then we'll announce the winners about mid-February. One other cool thing we have is our Instagram account, which is at Park Tool Blue, and we love to see your workshops, your pro shop, uh, your home shop, a mobile setup somewhere. So post on your Instagram with the hashtag Ultimate Blue Tool Wall and uh, we'll highlight some really cool ones on the New and Blue show, and these are some of them that we like since the last time we did this show. 
So that's it for this episode of the New and Blue Show. We will have more New and Blue shows as we get new product. And I can tell you that the next one, we are gonna have this bench full. So make sure you keep your eyes open for the New and Blue Show. So until then, I'm Eric Hawkins. This is Jake the Engineer and uh, happy wrenching. <laughs>